a really bad habit of going through mice really quickly. I'm constantly on my college discord trying to sell the mouse I bought a week ago. So whenever I stumbled upon a subreddit called R Mouse Reviews, I found a bunch of new toys to play with. It was in this subreddit I found out about the Final Mouse Air 58, and after five minutes of research, I knew that I would not be happy unless I got my hands on it. Quick disclaimer, I bought this mouse on eBay, slightly used, there was no damage on the box or the mouse. I have had no contact with Final Mouse as a company, nor did I know about their ad campaign, which I know a lot of people talk about in their reviews. This is purely about the mouse. Let's get the obvious out of the way. This is one of, if not the lightest mouse on the market, weighing in at just above 61 grams. I couldn't find a spec sheet on Final Mouse's site, but I'm guessing the 58 in Air 58 means that the body of the mouse weighs 58 grams. I could be super nitpicky, open up the mouse and take the paracord out and then weigh it and see if it's 58 grams. But since we're only two grams off with the cord, I think we're within reason to believe Final Mouse when they say this weighs 58 grams. Speaking of the cord, of course, it's very lightweight. Although it does feel very fragile. Honestly, just by looking at it, I feel like I'm going to fray it. So even though I personally use it at my mouse bungee, I wouldn't recommend you do if you're going to be taking it in and out. People who talk about this mouse get so much into the weight, they neglect to mention one big issue, and that's the size. This is a pretty large mouse, which is odd considering it's a very light mouse. Since I have beautiful, large hands, I have no issue with using this mouse, and I find it extremely comfortable. But if you are of the more size challenged when it comes to your hands, you may want to look closer and try your best to feel the mouse for yourself. The last notable feature about the shape of this mouse is the holes all over the body. It has holes on the tops, sides, and bottoms. Of course, this is to cut down on the weight, but also has a side effect which I enjoy, which is air passes freely through the mouse. Even, even though my hands don't sweat as much as some people do when they use their mice for a long time, I did notice that after hours of continuous use, my hands did not feel hot at all. My hands were able to stay very cool using this mouse. Some people mentioned having holes on the side of the mouse is uncomfortable, and it's relatively common to see people put grip tape on the sides of their mouse. Personally, I like it. The texture allows you to comfortably grip it so you can pick up the mouse if you pick up your mouse often while in use, but it wasn't uncomfortable and <laughs> it's better than having rubber on the side of your mouse. I mentioned in my Zowie EC2A video that I like firm mouse buttons and I'm really happy to say that these mouse buttons are just as clicky as the EC2A. They are firm enough to where I didn't accidentally click on them when I move it around rapidly like I did with the G502 mouse, but they aren't so firm that my finger got fatigued after playing cookie clicker or insert other rapid clicking game. There are two very discreet thumb buttons on the side of the mouse and I honestly didn't see them in any of the images. I was surprised to find them there. Final Mouse succeeds where Zowie failed. These buttons feel amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if there are mechanical mouse switches behind these buttons. They feel fantastic. They are firm, they have a really crisp click, they have an excellent travel distance, and they feel fantastic. Perfect, perfect side buttons in my opinion. Onto the weakest link of the mouse, the scroll wheel. If you look up anything about the final mice, you find out that the scroll wheel has been a consistent problem and final mouse said they would address it in this model of their mouse, but I couldn't find their statement anywhere online. And since I myself have not used any other of the final mice, I can't say if it feels better or worse. So I'll just have to compare it to other mice that I have used. And honestly, the mouse wheel in the Air 58 does feel kind of cheap. Unlike other high quality mouse wheels where it's all one uniform material like rubber, plastic, or metal, I think what's going on in the Air 58 is it's a plastic rim with a rubber tire on it like the old Lego cars. Correct! And the reason I say that is because when I scroll very quickly, it feels like the rubber doesn't turn as quickly as the plastic does. This doesn't happen often and only whenever I'm scrolling really fast. So I'm not going to deduct too many points for it and I'm not sure if what I said is actually what's going on. 
I'm just describing how it feels. However, that being said, the mouse scroll has never failed me. It always worked whenever I needed it to, and it was just a weird feeling when scrolling rapidly, although the mouse wheel overall did keep up with my movements. Speaking of the scroll wheel, you may have noticed that there is some Japanese kanji on the scroll wheel. This is Final Mouse's unique haiku, which they print on every single mouse wheel. Now, I say print, they're actually engraved, which is very good considering if it was printed or painted, it would wear off after long-term use. Since it's engraved, it's going to stay there permanently, I would hope. However, I do wish that there was a database for all the different haikus that they write because whenever I asked my Japanese friend to translate it, I mean a friend of mine who lives in Japan as an English teacher, I didn't just ask the first Asian I saw on my friends list, he had a very hard time translating it. But if you're interested, mine says, Willow searching for water inside an icy room. Some haikus you get are more common than others, but I doubt if you find yourself with the rare one, it's going to increase the value by much, if at all. Moving on to the mouse feet. Unfortunately, I cannot give a fair review of the mouse feet because mine came pre-installed with hyperglides. I can say that other people that have used the Air 58 complain that the mouse feet feel scratchy, but that the issue is resolved after a few hours of use and breaking in the hardware. This is the same with the mouse wheel, but since mine came used, it is very possible that both of these things were already broken in. So I cannot attest to whether this is true or not. But according to my research, it, it is. That's what the common people say. The common people, the peasants who can afford this freaking mouse. Moving on to the tech of the mouse, the Air 58 uses a uh, honestly, I don't know. I've done a ton of research on this mouse for this review and I cannot find the sensor anywhere. I did find a Reddit comment saying that the mouse uses a 3360 and since the specs match what the final mouse can do, that's what I'm going to go with. Regardless of whether it's a 3360 sensor or not, it performed flawlessly. In my two weeks of heavy use, I cannot recall a single skip or bump in their performance. Out of the box, this mouse runs at 500 hertz, and this seems to be a point of contention when people talk about this mouse. Guys, the difference between 500 and 1000 hertz is negligible at best. It's like a gaming monitor with one millisecond of lag or two. Probably even more negligible than that. Scream, who is arguably the best pro Counter-Strike aimer, uses a mouse that's 500 hertz. That being said, there is software that allows you to put firmware on the mouse that lets it run at 1000 Hz. But if you do this, you will void your warranty. And if the power goes out or your mouse comes unplugged while you're performing this software, your mouse will become the world's lightest paperweight. And lastly, just like with the Zowie mouse, there's a DPI button, this time on top, that allows you to cycle between 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 DPI. There is no light changing this time. There are no lights on this mouse at all, actually. So for all you RGB heads, I would hold out for the glorious Odin mouse, which looks to be a competitor with Final Mouse. So it sounds like I've done nothing but praise this mouse this entire review, and that's because I have. This is the best mouse I've ever used and I continue to use it as my daily driver to this day. Again, as a disclaimer, I have no history with the company Final Mouse and I bought this with my own money for $150. And I honestly believe it was well worth the cost. So if you can get your hands on one of these and try it, of course you should try all products before you buy it. But if you see it on eBay for $120, I wouldn't hesitate to click that button. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below if you have any questions about this mouse. I will do my best to answer them all. If you are interested in hearing about more mice, then I have an upcoming video project where I ordered a bunch of mice from Korea, which are copying popular mice in the States for significantly cheaper. If you are interested in the final mouse, then I have an upcoming project vlog where I hire a professional painter to take this thing apart and paint it for me. Let's hope that goes well. Anyway, this is Happy Hacker and I hope to see you next time.